Now we're going to get started with thresholding using scikit image. Thresholding is used to partition the background and foreground of grayscale images by essentially making them black and white. We compare each pixel to a given threshold value, and if the pixel is less than that value, we turn it white. If it's greater, we turn it black. Thresholding is the simplest method of image segmentation, a topic that we will cover in more detail later. Thresholding let us isolate elements and is used in object detection, facial recognition, and other applications. It works best in high contrast gray scale images. To threshold color images, we must first convert them to gray scale. Let's see how to apply it. Once an image is loaded, we need to set the thresh value. Temporarily, set it to 127, a midpoint between 0 and 255. We apply thresholding to an image by using the greater than operator followed by the thresh. Finally, show the thresholded image using show image. We can also apply inverted thresholding, which is just inverting the color. We apply it just as we do in thresholding, except that we use the less or equal operator instead of the greater than. Here, the resulting image is also binary, but the background is black and the foreground white. There are two categories of thresholding in scikit image. Global or histogram based, which is good for images that have relatively uniform backgrounds. Adaptive or local, which is best for images where the background is not easily differentiated, with uneven background illumination. Note that local is slower than global thresholding. Here we have an image to compare. In this case, it seems that local is without a doubt the best option. What if I want to try more algorithms? Well, scikit image includes a function that evaluates several global algorithms so that you can choose the one that gives you the best results. The try all threshold function from filters module. Here we import it, use the function by passing the image and set verbose to false so it doesn't print function names for each method. And then show results. It will use seven global algorithms. So here we see the first original image followed by the resulting images of the thresholding methods. We cover only the odd two, so this is an easy way to try the rest. When the background of an image seems uniform, global thresholding works best. Previously, we arbitrarily set the thresh value, but we can also calculate the optimal value. For that, we import the threshold odd two function from the filters model. Then obtain the optimal global thresh value by calling this function. Apply the local thresh to the image and the set. Let's see the image. We see the resulting binarized image next to the original to compare it. We see how the optimal thresh is spotted by a red line in the histogram of the image. If the image doesn't have high contrast or the background is uneven, local thresholding produces better results. Import threshold local, also from filters. With this function, we calculate threshold in a small pixel regions surrounding each pixel we are binarizing. So we need to specify a block size to surround each pixel, also known as local neighborhoods. And an optional offset, that is a constant subtracted from the mean of blocks to calculate the local threshold value. Here in the threshold local function, we set a block size of 35 pixels and an offset of 10. Then apply the local thresh. Showing the original and the resulting image, we can see that it works well in this image that has different lighting conditions. Now let's 